So let's take this conversation forward. Then I'm joined in studio by Vika Stale, the lawyer for student activist Kanyak Tagashe, as well as advocate Romion Tambereni, who is senior lecturer in criminal procedure at Monash University. Advocate Tambereni, yeah. let me pick it up with you. Let's talk yeah. about the pitfalls now, yeah. because this is, as you were saying, the president exercising his powers within the Constitution, mm. but we have to receive this decision mm. and process it and make of it what we want. Mm. There will be those who are saying, it's absolutely outrageous mm -hmm. given the crime situation that we have uh, in the country and there will be those who will be welcoming what the president has done. Um, what is your sense of the pitfalls uh, that are at play here including issues such as the rate of reoffense, which the department tells us is not that high? Yeah, uh, no, obviously the, de the department will, will, will uh, paint a, you know, a good picture on their side. You are making an important point of looking at the crime statistics in the country, they are alarming and you know we we are all aware about, you know, about that and unfortunately you know, you know, no, to less, this goes back to, to to bite the state you know, again if you know, an offender has been released and then recommits an offense and then the Minister of Justice is sued again you know, for damages and then it's, it's the taxpayers money you know, that, that must carry the burden. The Constitutional Court, the Concord decision of Kamishel you know, says the very same you know, issues relating to you know, you know, the, you know, an, an offender who was released on parole and go and commit another offense. So you know, the, the, the state again is going to be sued you know, uh, you know, for, 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 for those you know, kind of similar offenses that have been committed by people that have re-offended. But the minister is painting a, you know, a good picture there saying that you know, it's low you know, risk offense of people that you know, have been checked and you know, all the, the T's and the I's will be crossed and then all the you know, biometrics and necessary things will be done. But the question is the de deterrent one, the most you know, you know, important question that you are actually asking that outside in the public, uh, the, you know, the, the society taken through this process of saying that these people are not going to reoffend. These are the type of offenses that they have committed, and we have taken through them, them, them through the process of, of correction itself because. It's a relative process. It's neither here nor there. Whether a person is rehabilitated or not differs from one mm -hmm. process to another. The minister was actually referring you know, uh, nicely to the you know, psychologist's analysis in terms of what is expected of a person who has actually behaved. But it rests on the offender himself. And the, that entire process to, to less also inv you know, you know, involves the victims that have been affected by the crimes that you are actually relating to. And that's quite important as mm. well. Because as, as, far, as far as this conversation relates <coughs> to your client, Kanya Tagesh, I've seen two extremes uh, in society. An extreme that says the sentence that was imposed eight years initially was extremely harsh and irrational. Uh, of course, the uh, presiding officers have a discretion in as far as imposing sentences, but you've seen that criticism that says, how did this sentence even not get appealed right there and then as it was imposed. Then you have the other side that has argued that actually uh, your client did the crime and therefore should do the time. We have an epidemic of people uh, destroying public property uh, and at some point we have to start uh, putting our foot down uh, as society. Uh, uh, how do you understand um, the decision that has now been taken around the issue of parole in addressing issues of uh, sentencing which are left to the discretion uh, of uh, presiding officers? We must start first with if a person is convicted and sentenced, the court must ensure that it's a correct person that's convicted and sentenced um, and that, that the correct process was followed and that the, the accused or the, the, let's call him the accused was afforded his constitutional rights in the process of convicting and sentencing him. We are saying that Con Kanye was denied his constitutional rights. That's why his conviction and the sentence are, are, should, should fall away. Um, as for, as for the, the minister's pronouncement, it is for, for crimes that are less serious. Um, and we say Kanye did not commit the crime. And if you look at what other criminals are in the system, um, and if, it's, if Kanye is a dangerous person or not, he, he falls squarely within uh, the ambit of, of what the minister is intending to do. Yeah, and, and, and uh, Advocate Tamberin, mm. that, that, that point that Vikas raises mm. about the categories of people that qualify, I imagine that many people will welcome the fact that mm. murderers, people convicted of rape, child abuse, uh, incidents of so-called domestic violence mm. um, will not 
benefit from this. Yeah, and, and the habitual you know, criminals. I think that's quite important to actually look at the categories of people that are eligible to be released and, and, and narrow down between the serious you know, criminals and those that are convicted for life you know, imprisonment. And we have given, an, you know, he was given an example and he was asked a question on the, on the parole of uh, Janus Walus as well. And the oh, note, he dribbled that yeah, one. Yeah, and then he, did, he, was, he didn't come out <laughs> clear because he has to, you know, to read the judgment and consider that particular judgment in that case. And there, you know, no, no, to last, the important factor of the crime that was committed and the you know, impact on the society itself and the victims' rights are also you know, catered into the picture to say, we are not on, uh, going to look at this case in isolation. Let's look at everything, how it has actually happened and how it has transpired. Because... You know, it's important to us to note that the court will not interfere with that process and release him. You know, they respect the process of the separation of powers, yeah. and it is the administrative function of the correctional services to make a determination whether this person really qualifies for parole. You cannot call it on your own to say, "I've gone through the programs, I've done that, I'm remorseful, I'm, not, I'm showing contrition." You, you know, the the, the 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 board that sits on itself must make a determination. You don't call it on your own. You might think that you have qualified, you have gone through the processes but as the families in that in that case are saying that you have not come out with the, with the truth completely mm -hmm. and you have not taken us anyway so if you are not coming and make a clear confession of saying that if the devil made me do it you say it like that let it be clear so that we know exactly what made you do this kind of an offense. All right, gentlemen thank you so much for coming through I really appreciate your yeah. time uh, and your insights on this public Thanks. holiday advocate Romeo Tamberini as, ve as well as uh, attorney uh, Vekas Stale we've been talking about the announcement coming from uh, the department and the minister of, Co of justice and correctional services a remission of sentences for certain categories uh, of uh, offenders. Uh